Hey now, it's Little Ballette without the gang. I am back with the recap for Our Kind of People, Season 1, Episode 3, Hot Links and Red Drinks. I almost said Red Drinks and Hot Links again. Hot Links and Red Drinks. What's up, y'all? What you got to say? What's going on? Um, I wanted to tell you guys something, and it just flew out of my head. So we're going to just hop right back into it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please tell me guys tell me guys what you think. If you think this is boring, corny, I don't care what it is. Any type of feedback, I want to hear it. If you love it, if you like it, if you like the show, if you ever watched it before, I, before you saw my video, or my video uh, helped you decide to watch it, just whatever. I want to hear you guys' feedback. All right? Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when my next videos come out. All right? Let's get right into it, guys. And Angela is doing a wig. Um, you know, she's a hairdresser. And next thing you know, somebody knocking on her door like the popo. And Angela's like, who knocking on my door like that? And she goes and she has like a glass door. But it's like that funny glass where... You can see, like, the person, but they can't really see everything that you're doing in your house. If you know what I'm talking about. And you can see that it's Leah. And she opens the door, and Leah don't say nothing. She just walk in. Help me understand what you're doing going to visit my mother. Remember now, Angela was the one who volunteered to go and bring those roses to Mama Rose when Angela instructed one of the minions to do it. The minion, Tracy, she had her son's riding lessons and she couldn't go. And Angela, I think it was last episode, Angela had volunteered to go. You know, she just wanted to go so she could question uh, Leah's mother. And when she did, she found out some things about her mother, that her mother sold her for $50,000. So she ended up running up out of there. But remember, Leah's mother thought that Angela was Leah when she was telling her this stuff. Oops. And Angela started laughing and said, well, okay. Well, help me understand why you creeping on my social media. Leah was like, what? Angela said, I saw you. <laughs> I'm all the way back, y'all. My hands is back all the way back. Girl. And Angela was honest. She said, I went to go talk to Rose about my mother. You know, like I had some questions about my mother. And I guess Leah didn't like that. She gonna say, I'm sure you have questions about my father. I know all about your little paternity claims. Oh my God, how you going to say little paternity claims when your daddy just told you, make no mistake about it, Angela is your sister. This, uh, Y'all, the math ain't mathing. The math is not mathing. Angela said, they're not little paternity claims, honey. We're blood. I ran a DNA test. Way back, y'all. Way back. <laughs> and Leah gave the face that, you know, when somebody, you know, when somebody lying, but they're trying to play it off, like, <laughs> God, I don't know what you're talking about, but you know, you know, like, that person knows that you, they do know what you're talking about, like, that face, like, that ain't no real, you know, like, mm-hmm. And she was like, how could you have run a DNA? And Angela was like, don't worry about it. I did it. And if he sent you here, our father is a coward. You know, Leah was looking at her like. She gave it an ugly face. Talking about, you know, I'm not going to just let you come up in here and destroy my name and my family name in one fell swoop. You know, you see how. Her voice changes, her inflections, you know. She's so proper, so prim, and so much better than Lee, than Angela. But then when she wants to get down in the gutter, it's, I'm not going to let you and uh, come up in here. You know what I'm saying? Like, cold switching. But cold switching with your own folks. Girl, please, have several seats, Leah. 
And she gonna bust out her checkbook talking about, what's your price? Uh, don't you have a number in mind? And if you're uh, willing to leave, uh, I think quickly, I'm prepared to be extra generous. This girl don't get it. You think somebody gonna take a check for something that is not nowhere near because the big jackpot is half of their fortune? Like, that is her father, which means that everything you get, she gets half of. She is not going to take a check, and she is not there for the money. She is there to find out what happened to her mother. That is the whole reason why she wants to get in there, so she can look at files and see if there's any information of what happened to her mother. But that's how some bougie black folk are and i'm a bougie black folk too i just ain't got no money like liana i'm probably bougetto but i still i know what's up i'm bougie about certain things like food and you know places to live and stuff like that but i got good sense when it comes to this kind of stuff now, if she leave permanently she was uh prepared to be very generous and angela started laughing and she said i know this heifer did not just offer me a check. Way back, y'all. Way back. <laughs> oh, my God. My throat is hurting. Or else I would be laughing my ass off. Angela is just still looking at her. And Leah's like, you know, Franklin Holdens, they, they hold... They run credit on anybody that's trying to get in the incubator program. Not that you had a snowball's chance in hell. And Angela looking like this mother here. Talking about, but I will not stand for any type of scandal around this company. Uh, your father created the scandal around this company, not Angela. Angela was just born. Oh, she acted just like her old pumpkin head father talking about she can erase those debts from them four credit cards that she carrying and her defaulted student loan from Howard like she like what's that man uh Darius can cook doxing like uh, looking at people's stuff and then talking about their credit <laughs> no offense uh Darius but I did see you talking about I know who Got a ticket and blah, blah, blah. And I know when people be running people credit and stuff, they can see that, which is hilarious. She going to say, and of course, the balloon payment that's due on your, your small business loan. And Angela snatched a check and was like, understand something about me. And Leah's like, mm-hmm. You know, smart aleckly. She said, no one will ever buy or sell Angela Vaughn. And she had scissors in her hand and she took the scissors and cut herself and put her blood on the check and told her, here, go take this blood so you can run another DNA test. And Leah was like, oh my God, what are you doing? Got her all scared and she ran up out of there. She said, it's just going to prove what you're trying to run from, that daddy's little princess is going to have to share the throne. Hunty. Leah, little prim and proper ass, was spooked. Got the hell up out of there, like I said a few minutes ago. Honey, my Angela said, go ahead and take it. Did that check? Leah was scared. She's at that door, and Angela said, you're going to love to have me for a sister. Angela was hot, but she was scared. She was like, I got to get the hell up out of here. This girl is crazy. Honey, Angela got herself together and she went to go see Mr. Teddy Franklin. She ain't knocking her. She came up in that office. He was getting like a shave. And she told him he should have came to see her himself. He owed her that. Instead of sending his little mini-me. He was like, you look so much like Eve. And she was like, you don't get to say my mama name. Hmm. She set that check on fire and was like, you sent your little... Many me to pay me off. I'll never be for, for sale. Put that check in the glass on his desk. And he was just looking at it because he didn't send Leah over there to do that. So he didn't really know what was going on. And uh, plus, he probably shocked that she ain't for sale. Because you know how people are when they got money. They think they could just buy you off sometime. 
And she asked him, are you that ashamed, ashamed of me? And he was, she was like, you should be ashamed of yourself. And he was like, I'm not ashamed of you. And I never said Leah. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you don't know the whole story between me and your mother. And she was like, tell me. Because all I remember is you promised her the world. Mm -hmm. And you know what he did after that. And she was like, you never delivered. And you slammed the door in my face. Like she was a little, a little girl. And she was like, and you didn't even look back. And I sat on that stoop crying in the rain. My dress was so like, Ninja, you ain't even give a damn. She told him, your power, your name, your reputation, none of that means anything. Because basically, you trash. She said, basically, you are dusty. Like every other man that don't honor his child's obligation. Take care of your kids. Dusties. That's a PSA to you. It don't matter if you got money or not. A lot of these guys are still dusties. They got money and they still don't take care of their kids. And then he got up. He was like, I'm sorry you feel that way. Came and sat down in front of Angela. She was surprised that he came so close to her to come like talk to her uh, in her face. He was like, you're here now, and we need to find a way to manage this. She was like, manage? Manage? She jumped up. What am I, a business deal to you? And he's like, oh, no, you know, trying to handle her. Angela's crying, and he grabs her. Well, first he says, you never have been, and neither was your mother. And he grabs her hands, and she's standing there crying. You know Teddy got up to something. He is not sincere. Oh, I forgot to tell you, that hand started shaking under the table before he got up to go over there with Angela because maybe stress kind of triggers whatever it is because when Angela was telling him about herself, calling him contemptible and telling him he was a trash, she ain't say dusty. Dusty is my word. You know, I said dusty. Um, basically calling him a dusty, that hand was shaking. But um, after he, you know, said that managed stuff, and she, he was like, no, not you or your mother or whatever. Y'all not a business deal. He said, what do you want me to do? And Angela was almost, like, melting. Like, she was almost letting go and falling to his arms. Almost. Like, her body was, like, shifting, and you could see it in her face. She was letting go. And then she let go of his hand. Like, you know, like something is hot. Like, mm-mm. Mm-mm, daddy. And she was like, the same thing you've always done. Nothing. Yes, hunty. She told that nature nothing and bounced on him. Next thing you know, they show the beach and they show Taylor is home. She is with Nikki and they are dancing and taking selfies and pictures on the beach. And it's a uh, bunch of other kids out there and about a couple of about three girls acting you know laughing and looking at them and stuff and Taylor is like half of these chicks ain't even text me when I was in the hospital I'm sorry y'all if I'm moving around but I'm dancing too because you know I can remember how the music was playing and you know and I think about how me and my friends or me and my daughters would be if we was on the beach and then you know them three little ninjas over there calling each other house and field niggas. And uh, I'm sorry, YouTube. House and field ninjas. And uh, Nikki overheard that and she went over there like, uh, that is mad disrespectful. Like, this shit is not cute. Do not do that. Nikki was like, colorism is what keeps us all in that slave mentality. And it's mad disrespectful. She put that drink down real quick. Her and Taylor was having fun, but it was like to the ancestors and to everyone here. And Nikki was, I mean, Taylor was like, well, I think they just acting up because they got drinks in them. Don't trip. Come here. Come here. And one of the girls called her a bitch, and I think she called her a feel or something. And uh, Nikki came back, and she was like, uh, I could slap the dust out of that dusty ass weave or something like that. And then the girl was like, a bitch could try. And Nikki grabbed her and was like, I could try. Grabbed that weave and her head was going down. They was like, yo, yo, yo. 
You know, like I told you, Nikki beat the brakes off a girl. She don't want none of that. She do not want none of that. So I'm going to end it here, guys. I want you to please like, comment, and subscribe. I hope my mic didn't go out earlier because my puppy had jumped on me for a little while. Excuse me. And I didn't realize that my mic had uh, unclipped because he jumped up on my chest. So you might have to turn it up for a small part. But um, I'm going to stop it here and I'll be back with uh, the next part. Talk to you guys later. Thank you. Peace.